Attention passengers. This is your co-pilot speaking. Your pilot is black mind, so you are not going blind and there is no power failure. You are merely experiencing the immense blackness of his proximity, and when you hear his voice, you and the cabin will get even darker than you are currently. We will be cruising at the speed equal to light, because the one other thing that travels equally fast is darkness. Your loved ones awaiting your arrival may not recognize you at first sight. This is normal. Simply tell them about the pilot, and they will understand. We will taxi to the wrong way now, so please buckle up and prepare for a high-speed departure. Thank you for choosing Jet Black Airways, where the phrase Jet Black is also a verb. We hope you keep jetting black with us until the wings and the wheels fall off. Justice forever. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Peace out to the rest of you. Hit the share button because the message is more important than the messenger. You know, um, I'm going to add something to um, an observation made by our astute Reverend Brother Bishop Pastor Deacon Dr. Hurricane Edward Allen Anderson of the New Great Design Valley Precious Lamb. Oh Lord, hold my mute while I shout. Golden Monument of Hope, Faith, Holy, Bright Morning Star Tabernacle of being up on that vast and niches game and no simping incorporated. He made an observation that sisters will lay off of you if they realize that you were gone for sisters from the continent. Maybe the Caribbean. He was right. Generally speaking, he was right. I'm going to add something to that to add to throw in a little more nuance. I was just lucky enough to see this. The bishop who passed the hurricane Edward didn't lie. He just either forgot because he saw it so rarely or he didn't see it at all. So he couldn't have told us about it. I was merely fortunate enough to witness this. So I'm sharing it with you. Western sisters do kind of give bros a pass if we look into non-American sisters, but there are conditions to it. One of them is that she be dark. We don't object to a woman being dark, but the sisters demand that. The other is that she have a small chest, small cup size. They don't enforce that too much. Now they will make an exception if they find out that you actually prefer the small cup size and you got a, a busty woman. Now then they will make an exception because you got what you didn't like. Do you, you know what, let me go into that more later on. I'm just gonna say this now, actually. Let me go ahead and go into that now. They won't enforce that too much, but that is a thing. If you want to know how I know, well, I'm a titty man. And if I find an African woman with the chest for which I will thank Allah and on which I will leave proof of our marriage, believe me when I tell you the Western sisters who know us well enough will try to tell her that she can do better than me because she has breastuses. And if I hated big breastuses, they'd be trying to introduce me to titty mamas. Sisters pretty much when they find out what I don't want, they tend to go for that and say, well, I need to give that a chance. The only exception to that has been when I told some of them that I wasn't into light-skinned women. Do you see a pattern here or is it just me? That should sound familiar to you because that's what they do to you. Anyway, the other condition is that frankly, she must not be too good looking in the face. And the next one is that she must have a serious attitude problem. And the longer she's exposed to the West or to fame in the West, along with the better she looks, the worse her attitude better be. See, Western sisters only give so much of a pass. They decrease the smoke to a certain extent, but it is dependent upon the women being two things that don't even go together, except in the minds of the Western sisters making these judgments out of the gate. These two things or that she must be banned to West or Central African and she must be unattractive. They will give somewhat of a pass for these things. Obesity is even better in their eyes. Add to that a funky attitude and believe me, you will get less smoke compared to what you'd get if you chose a half black or non-black woman. Here's the thing though, sisters don't give the same passes to guys like me. They might or might not even give me smoke, but if an African woman likes me and she's nice to look at and be with, believe me, they will go to her and ask her why she's with me and not with a black man, even when they know I'm a black man. They will do this even to an American sister that's nice to look at. And the only way that she can generally justify that is if 
she says that she has a bad attitude or that she's using me. And that's how she can justify choosing me. She can then tell the sisters that she's cheating. And even then they will eventually want proof that she's cheating and giving me a hard time and using me. And they will demand that one day she tell me or that I catch her, that she let me catch her. These sisters are out here policing each other to make sure they lower the quality of what's available to us in the mating market. And they're angry at any women that violate this and offer even a decent combination of looks, youth and good attitude. It's not a coincidence that you see a low ceiling all the time. It's not just you individual listener in my audience, brother. That's them gaslighting when they reply to your observation by saying that you're getting this low ceiling because of something about you only. They're not playing, gentlemen. They're lying, but they're not playing. They are serious about denying you because you're a black man. It's all of us seeing the same low ceiling. Now, I was singled out for this growing up in the 90s, but they're now doing this across the board. I'm just able to tell you what they're doing because they did it to me and maybe three other guys I knew growing up. So I recognize it when I see it. Believe me, they know they're insulting you. You can't plan futures and families with such women. <coughs> Understand the sisters will give you a pass until they find out that you actually like and prefer the women from Africa or the Di or the Caribbean. When they realize that you could get non-black women and you weren't limited to within the race, they will then blame you. Then they will blame the women themselves that gave you a chance for being nice to look at and then adding a good attitude to the pot. All because they're so sure that you and I deserve no better than combinations of bad looks, bad attitude, and other people's bad decisions for which we must pay the bills and suffer the consequences. Nothing else, nothing better, end of. This leads me to something else. Right now, many of us brothers are in the darker skinned women from somewhere near the equator where the sun gets right overhead and it stays warm. There are three major differences between the women with whom we're now pairing and the women we're leaving behind. Complexion is actually a minor difference because we're looking at dark skinned Latinas, African continental women, and dark skinned to medium skinned Southeast Asian women. The major difference is a hair texture, and that's only about half the time. Language and culture. Now, I would have said religion, but I don't think it's a bigger difference than the one between a godless spiritual chick in the club in Atlanta and a practicing serious Muslim or Christian woman observing the rules, or Hebrew Israelite woman that observes the rules. So brothers aren't out here breeding kids that aren't recognizable as part black. That's not what is going on. We're siring Blasians and black, black kids. Sometimes they might have loose or curled hair because they're also East African or Asian, and they will probably hear both their mother's languages and English and learn them both. So there goes the language. And in the culture, well, the result is that they won't have dysfunction passed down to them. They won't have the screeching, panicking, loud trauma of the plantation passed down to them. You'll notice the linguistic improvements in these kids, too. They won't say things like irregardless and I could care less because they won't have the linguistically incorrigible hyena to teach this nigglish to them. You won't hear them say things like self-improve yourself either because mama won't be a neck rolling hyena who's redundant because she slept through English classes back in school, except for when she was disrupting learning or to see which guys were sleeping through it so she could determine who's fit to reproduce into the next generation. See, when you say self-verb yourself, that's niggish. You won't see him writing uh, things like uh, their cars are broken and they spell their T-H-E-R-E. -E. Because they will know the differences between homophones. Despite the anti-intellectualism in the hyenas, that they only pass down and by which they choose the worst to side their kids. Because remember, they don't let us pass down anything. We black men who are red pill aware and passport holders aren't out here practicing blanqueamiento. Now notice I didn't say mejorando la raza because that means improving the race. And we aren't doing that in the way that some sellouts mean when they say it, those who invented the term or the phrase, we are practicing it in the literal sense of the word mejorando or improving. We are actually improving the race by giving the kids better moms. Most of them a comparable melanin count to the women we're leaving. Just thought I'd add this in. I hope it helps.
I want to thank the Reverend Brother Bishop Pastor Deacon Dr. Hurricane Edward Allen Anderson for his observation. Because I learned a lot, things I can't really think of and other things I can't put into words and articulate as quickly. And certainly not without writing them down. He comes along at about the time I'm waking up in the morning, he goes live and man, he starts my day up. Who needs coffee? I do um, want to thank those who have uh, subscribed to the Patreon recently, newest one being Elias. Um, and I would like to thank those of you that have subscribed here and all of you who have hit the share button. Um, I appreciate you all flying on Jet Black Airways where Jet Black is also a verb. Keep jetting black with us until the wings and the wheels fall off. Gender, justice, forever. <laughs>